So the second half, okay, I'm going to delve into a little more biology, and then we're going to emanate into the oxygen ozone world a bit, okay? So what's important in body ecology is that we start thinking biologically, yet start thinking about your ecosystem. You are an ecology, okay? You are an ecosystem. What's important about that ecosystem, that it stays nice and clean and functional, okay? Well hydrated, okay? It's amazing that we're, we're a hot, wet suit here, that we really move at light speed. How do we do that? How do we do that? And we shall see. So it's all about ecology and how the tissues and the cells speak to each other. So my mentor was Majid Ali. So his perception, he was the father of integrated medicine. So it's the body's a system of ecosystems related and dependent upon each other. So what you'll find in typical naturopathic medicine, functional medicine, where is a lot of the initial focus of the therapy lie? In the oral cavity or the bowel, the gut. And we know where the gut begins, right here in the oral cavity, and where it ends. And remember, what's important to understanding about the GI tract, if you for health and longevity, this is where your focus a lot should be, nurturing that fermentation keg. Because that is where your immune system lives. Also, remember that your gut is an external organ that happens to be housed inside. It'd be messy to drag your guts around. But embryologically, your guts can be invaginated in. So this is how we perceive the world in a different way. We perceive the world, we think that we can see, we can touch, we can feel, all that. But also, there's a deeper perception. Your gut and the immune system is constantly checking out what's going on in the world and seeing how it has to react to different things, or should it react? Should it be tolerant, or does it deserve an immunologic response? How does it do that? Very simple. Every time you, you swallow, guess what? You're snipping the environment. You're snipping the environment, and your body's processing the environment that you're in. That's why you swallow. Nothing get the spit out of your face. You're processing your ecology. So you'll see in these detoxification, these functional medicine, integrated practitioners, they start working on the gut right away. Once the gut starts functioning, you're absorbing, okay, you're digesting, ingesting, assimilating, okay, nurturing the, all the microflora down there, everything is functioning. It will reflect on how the blood is, of course, once again, the liver, and all the way up to the higher centers right there. So all the foundational work ecologically, you'll see, starts in the gut itself. So integrated protocols you know, are designed to really support and balance that ecosystem in the patient itself. We're thinking differently. We're not just thinking allopathically. We're thinking about ecology itself. And of course, what's important is that reciprocation between you and the patient itself. The patient recognizing your capabilities and understanding and caring about what their particular situation is, customizing their, their protocols, but also helping them on that pathway to health and wellness itself. So the patient, of course, in an integrated team, the classical model, is the center of care, of course, in that itself. And listening to the patient, this is important too. You know, this is one of my more favorite statements. The intuitive mind, okay, is a sacred gift. And we should tap into that more. And the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Listen to these patients, their intuitive guide, and listen to your intuition, which a lot of times we don't. Also, integrated biologic dentist supports and helps, once again, to eliminate the barriers to wellness. It's amazing once we recognize the things that are necessary to reverse the bad, say, the, the bad ecology of the oral cavity, reverse that, remove the infective state, elevate the pH, get everything functioning up again, 
The barrier to wellness is eliminated, another barrier. And that's our job, getting barriers out of the way so the patient's innate healing processes can move forward. Well, what's critical to all of this, and none of this will work, unless the patient must be their best advocate and take responsibility for their health and wellness. And you've seen patients like this, whether you're in the biologic world or not, that, you know, God forbid they get a really problematic disease, let's say cancers or whatever the case may be, the ones that say, okay, I got this issue, I'm going to deal with them, I'm going to do what's necessary to make myself better and heal myself and become their best advocate, do what they have to do. It's a tough discipline. It's not easy. But they can reverse that. We have that capability of healing, no matter what the situation is. But it takes a level of discipline. And if they're willing to do that, they get better. Some patients, eh, it is what it is. Whew. Off they go down into that abyss. There we go. The principle of spontaneity of oxidation. We see that. This is built into the system. We have what's called redox. There's, there's, you know, it's the result of oxygen metabolism. Oxygen's wonderful, and you'll see a slide on that in a little bit but there has to be a balance. But built into our system is the concept of oxida oxidation. It's an, you know, it's an essential code of molecular injury. It's just built into our system. It's a byproduct of where we came from millennia ago. Once we started to use oxygen, the result is, okay, byproducts are oxidation and oxidative injury. But in a healthy ecology, that is balanced and offset by what's called antioxidants that are built within the cells themselves, catalase, superoxide, mutase. And the beauty about it is when we talk about controlling oxidation at this cellular level, because if oxidation dominates the body, this is what we see with aging and disease. So it's an oxidative state. So we love taking vitamin C, okay? We love, ooh, taking glutathione, all this stuff is fantastic. But you have to remember, those are supplements. To quench a molecule, an oxidative molecule, or a free radical, it takes one molecule of vitamin C. It's one to one ratio. Within the human cells themselves, there are different pathways that can quench millions and millions of these oxidative stresses within the cells and the cell membranes themselves. So ultimately, you know, we talk about glutathione, getting that up regulated, all this kind of stuff. The best is we have healthy cells that can produce those things that quench millions and millions of these oxidative stressors, these oxidative free radicals. So it's great to supplement, but the reality is what we want to focus on is cell health and functionality. That quenches and balances that redox potential and balance itself. And we see when things become you know, not balanced correctly, we're going to deal with, talk with this about this later, periodontal disease. These are representations of, of the imbalance of oxidation overwhelming the system because the ecological changes, and we're seeing the ultimate tissue damage. We see lymph vascular beds, lymphatic congestion in the tissue itself, and it, it's influencing the local ecology, but yet, once again, as the balance continues to slip, it's going to be a global problem for your ecosystem. So once again, we're looking to eliminate these factors that drive this, up, upregulate this oxidation that brings us out of balance itself. So when we have, oops, there it is. That's good. Make sure I didn't skip a slide. So when we have uncontrolled oxidative injury, and you see that in patients. You look at their eyes, they're starting to get caked over. The periodontal disease, you see this slow deterioration in their system. It's insidious. It's imbalanced. You have to try to slowly turn that ship. When we see uncontrolled oxidative injury, we see the vascular beds, the lymphatics starting to become gested. They're not functioning right. We get into what's called anabiosis, which I'll describe in a minute, dysfunctional oxygen metabolism. And that's one of the keys. As you become more acidic in nature, you're not utilizing oxygen properly. And you start to shift 
into a different metabolic state. And we start to see the body in general become ecological conditions that become more oxygen-eating microbes, it's more acid-loving environment. So when we talk about this anaerobiosis, the dysfunctional oxygen metabolism, I mean, what is that kind of really, really all about? Now, oxygen's amazing. It's amazing. Early on, before we started using oxygen, the world was based on something else. You had these archaic microbes that developed in this soup of stuff. They weren't using oxygen. Oxygen was actually a metabolic byproduct until eventually become the big oxygen uh, you know, explosion came and changed the entire face of the earth where now we started to get symbiosis, fusing of these different life forms to manage and utilize oxygen itself. But oxygen's amazing. It's a life giver, for sure, for us, because we're oxygen beings, and it's a life taker at the same time. So we have used oxygen in energy production. The Krebs cycle, or you know, the citric acid cycle, is based on what? Oxygen metabolism. It's all about electron movement. That's what life is all about. But a metabolic byproduct of that is, of course, those free radicals. Ooh, those radicals, man. Now, free radicals in a balanced system, it's fine. Free radicals are very important. They are messengers also. They are signalers for the body to respond in an appropriate way. When that balance goes out of whack, that's when we have a problem. So it's balanced through antioxidant nutri nutrients, like I said, those glutathione, all the vitamin E, you know, all those kind of like antioxidants and things. But ultimately, it's the enzyme systems, those antioxidant enzyme systems at the cellular level is what ultimately keep us healthy and functioning well, okay? Slow down that process. And it really was the work of one of my heroes, Otto Warburg, that came up with the concept of anaerobiosis, which is a pathologic state of oxygen metabolism. This is when your body shifts metabolically into a fermentation process, okay? And you, what we see as a result of that fermentation process is this uncontrolled oxidative injury. Now, what the hell does that mean? Well, we see this anaerobiosis, okay, this pathologic oxygen metabolism, in what? In chronically ill patients, cancer patients, chronic fatigue patients. They have shifted from an oxygen-based metabolism, metabolism which produces what? 36 ATP, and ATP are those energy packets, okay? Okay, remember, mitochondria are bacteria, you know, we millennia ago, we incorporated in, they're little batteries. If they're not functioning right, they shift metabolically and they start burning sugar. When they burn sugar, you slow down. You start producing 2 ATP. Okay, now the trick is, is to reverse that or the patients will slip into that once again, that abyss. You see this in chronically, chronic fatigue patients. They're tough to reverse out because they shifted into this metabolic state where they're burning sugars, okay? A lot of oxidation stress, they're more acidic in nature, and their energy's going down. And you look at them, they look perfectly fine. They can't get out of bed, they can't do anything. So this is where, once again, you have to change the ecology and dynamics of the patient to allow them to slip back into there. But that's where we can support that, and it's amazing, the spontaneity of healing. How the hell do we heal? I mean, think about it. You know, we don't think we take things for granted. It's, it always amazes me. You know, a simple thing, a little cut on the finger. Oh, I put a Band-Aid, you know, mercury comb, a little mercury in it. That always was good when I was a kid. Okay? How the hell does that heal? How does the body know in an intelligent way to knit this thing together, to send platelets in there? to send other cells in there to help clean up the debris. You know, how does it know that? It's amazing. But we have that capability of healing within our body. So remember, we have the physical part of our body, but there's a lot more to us than just the physical that allows for these things to occur. And that's one of the most important things about for all of you, 
is that you all can become dental healers. Okay? You have the capability of helping your patients heal themselves, making yourself a healer. Because you know what? As you heal them, you're healing yourself. And that's always a process. We're always on that pathway of healing. And that's very, very important. So the patient does have that innate capacity, given the correct support to heal. That essential code for healing, whatever that is, is that it, that energy, is it the soul, is it the what, whatever that is, you know, we can heal. That essential code is built into our system and it's woven in that it can recognize injuries and with the proper things, if it has that capability or with our support, to fix that. And that's a term I love to help fix patients. I'm tired of, my daughter explained something to me which was beautiful, cardiac nurse, I'm hoping she goes to dental schools so I can get out of this racket. No, I can. But she says, you know, I'm in a hospital. Brilliant girl. And she says, you know, Dad, I says, I'm, you drive me crazy because she knows what we do. She says, I go there, I put a Band-Aid on somebody. When that Band-Aid fails, what do we do? We put a bigger Band-Aid and a bigger Band-Aid and a bigger Band-Aid. We don't fix anybody until they slip off. Maybe get some mechanical heart work, something, okay, you're somewhat fixed. But all we're doing is putting Band-Aids on. We hope that we can fix things. But with the spontaneity healing, it's that inner intelligence we have. And life is all about electron movement. The essence of biology, in its deeper sense, is quantum biology, okay? We're kind of the ship in that ocean, you know, we're running through those currents and stuff like that, and that's all that kind of physical and kind of emotional stuff, okay? But deep down, that deep ocean, okay, that's down there, that's the quantum biology. That's the movement of electrons, that energy flow in your body that drives that healing. We're on the super edge of trying to understand that, but it's essential is that these electrons can freely move. And depending on the ecology of the body, that hot, wet environment, that will help dictate the ability of this electron movement for health and wellness. When we have a dysregulated body, acids are picking up, oxygen metabolism, right? Electrons start doing dopey things, and you become dysregulated. And this is where that deeper oxidative injury eventually emanates out. Because remember, by the time we see things on the physical plane, a lot has happened already. Okay, this is when you're thinking biologically, you're thinking in a deeper sense, okay, this is the symptomology, but what the hell is underneath that keeps pushing this thing along? If we can fix this, the rest will emanate out and go. So, the body has, of course, that amazing capacity to auto-regulate. It reorganizes itself structurally, functionally. You know, you think about it. I mean, the things that are going on in your human body, just to go like this, is unbelievable. How the hell did I even stand up straight? All these things we really trying to understand. When I, my first biochemistry class was when I was in graduate school, Opened up Leninger, number one, with stick people, eh, little things. I opened up a number of years later, Leninger like seven. Oh my God, these three-dimensional models and everything else, my God. And you know what? We haven't even scratched the surface of how this works. So we have that capability, the electron, this energy movement, and maybe the essence of medicine in the future is quantum in the sense that we can control and flow the energy that would allow for the rest of healing to occur. So, of course, you know, that mystery of life beyond the body, that spiritual component. And years ago, you know, I was in the oral facial pain world. I never wanted to deal with the emotional component, the spiritual stuff. It was just wasn't my thing at that time. And, you know, I, I, was, I was putting a thought again, ultrasound, ugh, all this kind of stuff. But that led me in the path where I am today. But for complete healing, 
you have to deal with these issues. Sometimes we don't like dealing with it, but the reality is, is, you know, on the spiritual and emotional and mental end, they all have to flow right, and you have to square their way, and that's a process to itself, believe me. You know, we, we're, wonder, we're very lucky with our group that we have really spiritual healers. I mean, stuff will make your hair go, mm-hmm. how do you know these things? But they have there, they're open, they have these open channels. But that's all part of the healing, to be open to it. And your patients will talk about that. Because, you know, ultimately, you know, you have to, to surrender to that concept. Ultimately, you're going to have to deal with the spirituality of yourself. Sooner or later, you'll have to deal with that. That's for sure. And that's a critical important as far as healing is concerned. But what's also important with that spiritual mental component is that when you're on the pathway to healing, whether it's yourself or your patients, they got to get the hell out of the way. You have these patients come in. Uh, I think my toe had a little twing to it, and I felt this, and I felt that. And I, how the hell can you heal if you try to micromanage yourself? You're constantly in a, a mindset that, oh, I got this, I got that. You can't heal. You know, we're our own worst enemy at times. I swear to God, we're, we, we do crazy stuff to ourselves. Like, ah, do all kinds of crazy things. For you to heal, and for the patient to heal, get the hell out of the way. If we overthink stuff, we can't heal. We wind up blocking that, okay, in a deeper energetic sense unto itself. So we talk about the mind, the body, the emotion, the spirit, you know. For healing, you know, we really have to sometimes surrender to that silence. I mean, this is something we sometimes we can get through through meditation. We see through prayer, you know, prayer. Uh, you have to just quiet your mind. Dentistry is not an easy profession. You're dealing with the physical components, hunched over patients all day. You're dealing with their crap that they're dealing that they're dealing with, projecting onto you, plus all the other fun stuff of the world. Okay, so part of your process, besides keeping yourself as healthy as possible on many other levels, calm down. My wife is working on calming me down for a while. It seems to be working, I think, or she'll kill me, one or the other. But I tell you what. This is from my dear friend, Dr. Majid Ali. It's really the energy of love, man. You can't put a value on that. Okay, the energy of love. And it's, it's heartbreaking at times when you see some patients that have no support whatsoever. They're ill, they have no family, no friend, no nothing. And they're out there, and it's unfortunate. Because if you have a support network, people that love you, support you. It's amazing how people can heal themselves. Sometimes we get in trouble, physically, whatever, but through that love, things can happen. So my dear friend wrote, it seems improbable that man will ever fully understand the healing energy of love, or to be more precise, the healing energy of God. Medical technology itself an expression of God's energy is beginning to allow us to measure some things about love and then reproduce them. Measurement and reproducibility make up the language of science. One day it seems to me that men of medicine and the men of spirits will meet at some summit of union. The energy of love will have brought them together. And that's a big component of that healing process, having that beautiful energy of love. Sometimes I feel over love with all my kids, believe me. It's like, I need a quiet moment. So we talk about human biology. It's really incredible. It's really enormous webs of webs. It's totally integrated. Your body is not one thing. It is, it is one thing, I'm sorry. It's all meshed together. Everything is connected to everything else. There are no separate pieces. We do this. When I was in anatomy school, Every little dink and this and that had a name. And, the, you know, the anatomist game is playing with labels. You know, how many, how many branches of the maxillary artery? You know, that kind of insanity. But the reality is, living human beings, it's totally different. It's all one thing. And it is a kaleidoscope, okay? The web of the human biology forms a panoramic kaleidoscope. One thing happens one place, it affects everything. Anything you do as a dentist affects everything, okay? It's like 
I hurt my little toe. Well, a week later, my hip is killing me because you're talking and changing, okay? But when we talk about cells, the concept of cell, <clears throat> you know, we think about it. You know, when I was a kid, you know, cells, oh, we use a piece of cork. Oh, look at a cell. That's, that's great, okay? So I was speaking only in morphological abstraction, and cells, in a biologic point of view, really are a reflection of the ecology that they live in. They're in a healthy, functional ecology. They're up functioning, doing their well. They have their structure, they have their skeleton, they have all kinds of cool stuff. They hang out with their friends. Beautiful, okay? But what does that environment really, really mean? So I know last night, Matt over here, great host for Ozone Course not too long ago, you know, who was saying to me, Phil, how does oxygen get to a cell? I said, Phil, how do nutrient get to a cell? How does metabolic waste or poop get out of the cell? And what is a cellular ecosystem? And what is a cellular matrix or terrain? And this is the essence of biology. Okay, this is the essence, the unifying component of biology in the human body. <clears throat> now, when we think about medicine and dentistry, talk about linear thinking. Okay? I mean, medicine's drawn on linear thinking. How was dental school? You think that was linear thinking? <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, going back, cause and effect, you know, organisms that were just machines, et cetera, drug to cell. Remember the old lock and key concept? Okay, receptor, then reaction, linear thinking. Okay? Once again, in linear thinking, you know, Virchow's model, you know, you have a drug, kills the bug. Of course, the bug is the cause, all right? And of course, you get immediate repair. We've seen that, so that's pretty much can be objectified. But unfortunately, this linearity, you know, the linear components of this thinking really doesn't work today. We're seeing all the chronicity of disease. We're seeing tumors. We're seeing people live longer. What's the quality of their life? So thinking in a linear fashion, that necessarily addresses these particular issues itself. So when we're thinking about integration, we want to think in a non-linear way. Okay, we're gonna get out of that box, okay? We'll hop into another box, but it'll be a fun box, okay? So what is the root cause, regardless of disease? Some of the greatest functional medicine and greater practitioners, they don't give you what the hell is wrong with you, what you're perceived as far as the disease label is concerned. What is pinning, what's the underpinnings? What created this in your system, and how can we change that that will ultimately reflect all the way up to the top through the symptomology itself? What's the patient's experience? You know, the focus on the individual, okay? Understanding, once again, those biologic underpinnings and process and that phenomenon about being sick. People get into that whole phenomenon about this is, you know, they're visiting 85 doctors a week. What kind of lifestyle is that? But thinking biologically, biologic systems, which we are, are not linear in any matter, shape, or form. It's highly interlinked, okay? And it's a balance of biologic flow. It's all about energy flow, fluid flow, electron flow itself. It's an open system. Open energy flowing through where it is necessary to maintain the functionality and the health and wellness of the patient or the individual itself. But the most important thing in any biologic system is information. This is critical for the health and wellness of any individual. You, your cells must communicate in an open, clear, coherent fashion with the overall system. If these cells are given poor or bad information, they're going to respond. I always love talking about the epithelial cell. The epithelial cells are great. You're made up of gazillions of epithelial cells. They're all cavity cells. The oral, oral cavity is made up of epithelial cells. But if they're not told what to do correctly, they're going to do really stupid stuff. As the ecology changes, not in necessarily in a favorable fashion, but in a toxic fashion, they're going to get bad information, start producing weird, bad proteins, and do naughty things. And eventually, you guess what? You just grow, grow a tumor. Okay. So it's important that the input and processing information is clearly important. The most suitable energy carrier is information. These principles are carried through what's called the extracellular 
matrix and terrain. Extracellular matrix and terrain. And we're going to get into that just a bit. Because this is where all your detoxification occurs. So your body talks in clear, coherent ways through what's called cytokines and energy patterns. Now these cytokines we called cytokinese. And Tesla was able to reproduce that. And this is a form of communication itself. We lost our background music. Oh, it's coming up. We are, homeopathy works on frequencies, bioresonance. This is what you're seeing. This is the language of the body. body is always in a state of flux and resonance. It resonates. The higher the frequencies, the higher resonation, the clearer, the healthier the body. So as you can see, <clears throat> the clearer we resonate, the clearer the information, the better the outcomes on the cellular level. How does that really work as far as communication, information, getting to the cell? We'll talk about a cell for a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where's the intelligence of a cell? Where is it? Well, we used to think, okay, that little ball that's inside the cell, the nucleus, is the brain. The reality is the cell membrane is where the intelligence of a cell really comes in. I'll show you that in a minute. So this is where all the thinking has to go on. Transportation of molecules coming in, transportation of molecules come out, dealing with oxidative stressors, etc. The nucleus itself is what? A protein factory. 
information comes into the nucleus, it produces proteins in there with the DNA, all that kind of cool stuff in there. And then those proteins have to be processed through the cell itself. And then eventually when they're mature enough, they are distributed out into the system itself. <coughs> so this work was done about the extracellular matrix. It was done by Alfred Pissinger. Now a great textbook for you is Power versus force. That's a great intro into the kind of the biological power versus force. And I'll show you about Pissinger's work in a minute. But he was a, good, a great anatomist and histologist, and he discovered this concept that where there's an interface between the vascular beds, the lymphatic beds, and the cells themselves. A cell doesn't say, oh man, I need some oxygen, I need some water, I'm going to go rub up against a capillary or something. It just doesn't work that way. So Pissinger's work is pioneering, in the say the least. Every function, every process in the human body involves a matrix, this matrix, one way or the other. If you took everything away from the human body except the extracellular matrix, you have an absolutely perfect outline of the human body. This unifies everything in the body. This is how information travels through the whole body almost instantaneously through the cellular matrix itself, okay? The reason every cell of the body is nourished via the matrix, all the poop and pee comes out of the matrix, and this is highly regulated. It has its own brain. Totally autonomic system that completely regulates this whole relationship, nutrients, cytokines, et cetera, flowing from the vascular beds, lymphatic system, to the cells and back out in a highly intelligent way. So when people are detoxifying, the reason I'm going here, detoxifying and um, alkalinizing, what the hell are they alkalinizing, for example? Are they alkalinizing their blood? You can't, you kill yourself. What they're trying to do, or you're trying to do, is alkalinize the matrix. The matrix functions at a higher level, more alkaline than acidic. If it builds up with acidity, acid, and heavy metals, and environmentals, it becomes extremely sluggish, and this is when information falls off the cliff and the cells change because of bad information and toxic ecology. Once again, the cells reflect what? The ecology of that particular area. So if you nurture the matrix, maybe even periodontal disease, et cetera, these different things, thinking about the matrix, how can we nurture and function, get the matrix functioning up correctly, that will reflect in a deeper sense through the system and make things better. So the extracellular matrix is really, the once again, the unifying biologic system in the human body. Unifying biologic system. So that's when you stick somebody in the face with a nice needle to get them numb. That's why their little toe feels it through the matrix itself. And it's pretty amazing. It's made up of all different type of collagens, fibroglycans, glycoproteins, elastins, amazing structural components itself that support water sieves. It, you know, water molecules right along down to the cell itself, okay? So, you know, I'm not going to even read this, but it's, once again, it's really made up of an incredibly complex system of collagens and sieves and, and once again, highly, highly, highly regulated. And it's, it's simplistic representation is, once again, is really here, where we have the cells themselves here, and here's the, the vascular beds, lymphatics, et cetera, but highly innervated in here. So this area here is the matrix itself. So in an intelligent way, things flow into the cells and out of the cells in a smart, intelligent fashion. And here, you know, some studies showing how they're trying to make a matrix for cardiac to grow cardiac muscle on. But also the beauty of, I love this slide, because this really shows the dynamic of a cell membrane. You know, years ago, we used to thought of membrane as like a sheet of cellophane or something, you know, it's a membrane. The reality is, it's far from that. It's made up of what? Phospholipids plus a bunch of protein, you know, ports here that allow for active movement and involvement of different molecules being placed actively or passively in and out of the cell itself. It anchors itself in the matrix area itself. That's why when I talk about resonance and people talk about, oh, I need to eat good fats. Why do we need to eat good fats? 
versus you know hydrogenated oils because your body will incorporate whatever fat you're using into make your what your cell membranes and your cell membranes these phospholipids are constantly resonating okay there's constant movement now if you put bad fats in your system those fats your body's going to use it become more and more rigid and that creates long-term problems that's why olive oil different type of good oils are incorporated, phosphorylated in the system and allow for good resonance itself. So our next slide, we're gonna show, we're gonna travel from the nucleus out through the cell into the matrix and back down itself. This doesn't have music, so I'll have to sing along for you. Oh, McDonald. So we're out now in the matrix area itself, you can see the capillaries themselves, the lymphatics itself right here. Always a dynamic of biological molecules. We're in a water environment. And water is amazing. It can act as a gel. It can act as a crystal. It can do all amazing type of different things. We have structural proteins. We have water molecules collecting over here. These molecules in a nice, clean, functional environment. We have all different structural collagens here, elastin, holding and supporting these structures going in down to the cellular membrane level itself. We have worms in there now again. We have molecules here, protein-based molecules that actually hold and collect different biologic molecules and release them when they're needed all in an intelligent way. I mean, how the hell do you think about these things? You can't, you can't possibly think about it, but that deep innate intelligence, that innate capability of these incredible molecules in this water system flowing in an appropriate, intelligent manner. As we get down through these structural collagens themselves, we're getting deeper into the system. Now we're approaching the cell membrane. And you can see these phospholipids are super resonating. And you can see those active and, and uh, passive ports bringing those molecules, information, et cetera, down into the cell itself. This is where nothing is static. It's all resonating. This information, this energy is traveling down, back down into the nucleus. Information traveling in a clear, coherent way. And the nucleus will make all those raw proteins that will be distributed through the body itself. So you can see that it's very important at the cellular level that clear, coherent information get in here, metabolic toxins get out, good information, good water, great food, great oxygen gets in there. But if we have a dysfunctional matrix itself, okay, you see abnormalities in the, you know, the extracellular matrix, the biosynthesis and catabolism breaking down at the cellular level. The cells start to become pathologic. The physiology starts to change. Things start to drift, and eventually we see disease. The point here is that by the time you see this, all this has happened already. A lot happens prior to the disease state of coming out. So things start to break down at the cellular matrix level and then eventually emanate out to what we see symptomology. So the essence of biology, you know, we're talking about the capillary, we're talking about the cell, we're talking about the matrix functioning together in a clear, coherent way. Talk about a little dental stuff, okay. You know, when you think about dentistry, okay, great, the tooth. The tooth is an amazing complex thing. It's unbelievable. Okay, you know, the enamel forms a myeloblast, and we have the inside of the tooth lined with odontoblast. What is the purpose of the pulp? What do we have a pulp for? I know you've been thinking about it today. The pulp is really a sophisticated what? Matrix. Its purpose is to support and nurture the what? The odontoblast and make you have agony on Saturday night when you don't want to go into the office, okay? So the pulp there is your super extracellular matrix nurturing and caring for those beautiful odontoblasts that make teeth 
alive and happy. So the fact is that it affects cell biology, of course, the matrix itself breaking down, growth factors, cytokine lack of information, hormones, vitamins, cell-to-cell -cell contact, epithelial cells love to contact each other. Once that barrier is broken, simple example is leaky gut syndrome. Epithelial cells aren't nurtured properly in the large intestine, they separate apart, and you got a leaky gut. So beyond, of course, the basic genetic program, you got growth, shape, differentiation, development, and the chemical response of these cells itself. So once again, for healthy cells, all these factors coming in, factors coming out, regulated by what? The matrix itself. So when you talk about these detoxification programs, alkalinization programs, a lot of the focus is on what? Fixing the gut, but at the same time, getting this matrix detoxified and functioning well so the cells can get what they properly need. But you know, the amazing thing about the human body, if we can take a hell of a lot, it's unbelievable what we can do to ourselves before, before we give up the ghost. I'm telling you, what abuse we can do. When I was back in anatomy school, we'd dissect people and remember uh, my first body, Carl, you know, we are doing the gut because we did the whole dissection and we're like pushing on his abdominal aorta. I said, what the hell is that? So he stripped back the aorta and the whole thing was lined with what plaque. It was like calcium, the whole thing. And he had huge lesions all over himself. And, you know, I didn't know. I was an anatomist. I didn't know pathology or nothing. I look back now, it's, just, it's amazing, you know, how we can compensate. We have biologic elasticity. We can, you know, react to all the winter storms, droughts, accidents, beat up, hunger, thirst. And we have that capability of bouncing back that's built in our system. But, you know, it's amazing of all the crazy ass stuff we're made of, all that unstable, nutty stuff, you know, has learned to maintain stability, okay, that innate intelligence holds us together, okay. You know, sometimes yeah, those toxins build up. You know, when I was a kid, we were playing with mercury, and that's great. No wonder half my friends are nuts today, okay. So you know, these toxins build up, and then all of a sudden you start to fall into the abyss. You lose the ability to detoxify. Your matrix breaks down. You're not pooping. You're not peeing. You're doing all those things. And you accumulate. You know, I don't know if uh, Dr. Palmer talked about it, but you know, there's testing modalities for mercury, right? The hair analysis and, you know, blood tests and all that. You know the patients I worry about the most? The ones that have fillings in it, of course, stuff like that. Or the ones that come back, oh, I have no mercury in my system. My test is perfectly clean. Those are the sickest people, by the way, because they're not detoxifying. What those tests reflect are not just how much, there's no way to measure how much mercury, per se, you have. Those tests don't do that. They're kind of alluding to the fact that you have some, yeah, well, we all do, but how much you're getting rid of. Your capability of getting rid of it. The sickest people are the ones that come back, oh, I'm mercury free. What planet are you living on? Mercury? No, those are non-excretives. They don't have that capability, those enzyme systems, to detoxify and flush this stuff out. They're the sickest people and all of a sudden they implode. They fall off that cliff. So watch when you read those tests, the implications there. So in our world, you know, hey, Dentistry's beautiful, man. We're dealing with chemical solvent. Do we still like to like bathe our hands in methyl methacrylate? Remember those custom trays? That's a beautiful thing. Of course, we deal with infection. We deal with aerosols, heavy metals, and environments. And it all contributes to the toxicity and how we're using oxygen, and metabolism, et cetera, and getting that matrix up and functioning right. So when we're talking about integration and biologic philosophy and the infection control part, we're in an environment where certain elements have evolved. We're broken out of colonization. We're in an effective state. We have the anaerobiotic dysregulated environment. And we ecologically have to change it to a well-balanced ecology, OK? A regulated environment, back to homeostasis itself. And we see that, once again, you see osteonecrosis of the jaw, periodontal disease, cancers, et cetera where the vascular beds collapse down, and that ultimately reflects, the matrix is going with it, ultimately reflects on how the tissue responds. 
So we're using our protocols, our tricks of the trade, per se, to get this dysregulated environment using integrated biologic dental therapies, oxygen, ozone, et cetera, a multitude of different things to get things regulated and back on and functioning right. So remember that the human body is that open energetic ecosystem. No matter where the infection or toxicity is, it's just not one place, it's everywhere. Situations like this, once again, these are not local events. They are, but appear to be local events, but they're far-reaching implications. And this is not what you want to have in your head. But with the proper therapies and support, we can get this tissue back up and regulating in a biologic sense. We can go from biologic-based therapies, dysregulation to regulation itself. So when you talk about integration therapies, the treatments are safe and effective. We like them to be non-toxic, minimal to no side effects, meaning that you know, your liver won't die the next day or you know, you'll be dead, then you can call your lawyer. Synergistic with the patient's own biochemistry, physiology, and anatomy. Synergistic therapies. Synergistic therapies, okay? You know, it's important to enhance the patient's innate healing processes, okay? And within the ultimate outcome to reach a state of biologic homeostasis. And this is the essence of integration where, you know, you have, for example, osteonecrosis of the jaw, periodontal disease. You're bringing all these different philosophies and these different remedies in together, integrating them, that what's appropriate for the patient. And you might have to change things. Some remedies won't necessarily work. There are kind of cool testing modalities that you can learn over time to help focus what the patient's needs are. But also underpinning all of these things, these wonderful different types of naturopathic philosophies, allopathic integration, et cetera, you're now thinking biologically and you're thinking in terms of, wow, that matrix we also have to take care of and nurture. How can we do that itself? So ultimately, on the pathway to wellness, we want to repair, we want to restore and renew. So our philosophy really is understand and assess the patient. You know, start therapies slow and low. Sometimes you don't know how the patient's going to react. This is allow, once again, allow that patient to understand, you know, you to understand how the patient's going to function. Have some initial foundational therapies, support the healthy tissue, that's very important. Clear those pathways of drainage, meaning make sure they're sweating, breathing, pooping, et cetera. Create that biologic gradient, and that will reduce the toxicity and effective titer. And then you can go get those infective um, diseases and foci of infection and get that patient back to homeostasis. So it's really a point of it's different pieces of the puzzle. And this is what saved me in dentistry, to be honest with you, because years ago, you know, it's fun doing crowns, it's fun doing fillings, it's nice, da da da. I says, this is it? This is the mechanics I'm gonna be doing forever? But getting into the biologic concept and looking in a deeper sense, and it really evolved out of my life you know, doing oral facial pain, and through the, uh, I did a lot of training with osteopaths. So it's interesting, a journey in life, how it takes you. But just the key is, thinking a little bit differently itself. So once again, I mean, integrative biologic dental medicine is integrated biologic dental medicine is defined as dental medicine that partners with the patient. Dental practitioners develop integrated biologically safe, effective, established, and emerging treatment modalities that allow for the treatment that is not subservient to any one school of thought. And that's really important. Please just be open to all these even these crazy things you might think of, these energy medicines and so like I'm telling you, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's really open up your mind to that. So, you know, with an open mind, anything is possible. And I think you know, my wife always reminds me what Frank Zappa said, you know, he says, the mind is like a parachute. If it isn't open, it won't work. That's for sure. So what you want to do is you get educated. You want to take this further, get educated, you know. Go well, back to the basics, you know, there's a lot of great information in your anatomy, physiology, bio, biochemistry books. Oh my God, I gotta go back there, especially in biochemistry. I mean, that's changing dramatic, dramatically all the time. Attend these meetings, share your experiences with others. Enroll in a certification program, come to the American College, you know, become board certified, 
in uh, biologic uh, dental medicine and naturopathic medicine. Come to these things, get certified. A great book, another book for you to read other than Power Versus Force. This is one of the first books we give our students, Alfred Pissinger's work. This is the essence of biologic medicine right here. This work here on neurotherapy and how things work, how detoxification works, how the matrix functions. It's a bit of a read. It's one of those, I go back and read it all the time. And every time I go back, I pick up another little pearl. But this is a wonderful, incredible text. So, you know, what are the rewards with this thing? I mean, you know, you're going through all this education. You know, you're going to have a better time. You're going to have a fun time. The rewards are, what's economics? You'll always be busy. Believe me, no matter what the hell the economy is, unless the coronavirus kills everybody, okay, you're going to do very well itself. You'll make a lot more money seeing less patients. I mean, Griffin Cole does a, a lot of practice management for us at the school. And it's like, you see less people, you make a hell of a lot more money. And, you know, just for yourself, you're supporting the patient's pathway to health and wellness. You're healing them. You're healing yourself. It's an intellectual pursuit. It really is. You know, you think differently. You're healthy. You're mindful. You're not just that mechanic. Even though we love the mechanics, that pays the big bills, of course. But it transcends that. You're thinking differently. And you're becoming that dental healer yourself. And you'll have an incredible uh, network of, of like-minded practitioners out there itself. So it's really a matter of ecology, biology, and thinking differently. So let's turn the gears a little bit. So healing dental-related disease with only oxygen and water. How can we do that as a biologic therapy itself? So once again, I'll show you this slide. I mean, what's the problem here? And dentistry is, you know, it's complex. I mean, a lot of physicians I know, they're happy they don't have to deal with dental stuff because they don't even like to inject in people's heads themselves because of all the complexities that are going on. So is that problem, is it muscle pain, myofascial pain, temporomandibular joint pain, nerve pain, tooth pain, the infamous pulp exposure, deep caries, pit and fissure sealants themselves, that's always a good one, dry sockets, all these wonderful things we deal with. Perineal problems, can we deal by manipulating oxygen and manipulating water to deal with these issues and reverse these things and allow that innate healing process to come forward? And yes, you know, we can do that by using dental ozone itself. Which once again, we're about one thing. And I showed you this slide before about dental infections, chronic, acute, bacterial, viral, fungal, parasitic. And what if, you know, effective therapeutic would eliminate all these, put them back into a colonized state. When you think about integrated treatments themselves, regimens themselves, we have all those different things, essential oils, ultraviolet light, lasers, we've got cool laser stuff now, ultraviolet light but oxygen ozone, which we're going to talk about now. So with oxygen ozone, how did this all occur? Well, let's see. 21 years ago, I was in Washington, D.C. with Bob Harris, working on a doctor in integrated medicine. And we're going to do a class, a naturopathic medicine class, and we're going to do ear candling, ear candling, and ozone therapy. I'm like, what the hell is this? But we'll go with it. So we take these your candle things, which are like candy cones, you know, things, and you put them in the air and light them up. And it's nice. So you can put a little essential oils. Oh, this is nice. This whole classroom's filled with smoke. It's awesome, right? Having a great time, very calming. And then the instructor, Dr. Hutto, had this little ambient oxygen ozone generator itself. And there's stethoscope attached to it. So now you're going to ozonate your ears. And we had about, what, six dentists or so in our class. And it was like, man, that stuff will kill you. What the hell is that all about? But a few of the naturopaths were in with us. They did it. They were alive. Oh, so we tried it. We were interested more in where we were going to have lunch that day. So we do a five-minute treatment. OK? Great. So we all go down to Union Station in DC. We're all sitting there. And it's like, man, you smell ozone? Yeah, man, it's coming out of my skin, oh my God, you know. 
So I go back, and Bob was talking to Hutto, and Doug Hutto had this, this textbook that had just come out from Renata Vivon, who happens to be a very good friend of ours now. She wrote a great textbook on ozone therapy, on medical end. And I'm reading this thing, and, you know, I really wasn't much interested until a friend of mine was teaching at Tufts University gave me his ozone generator. So it sparked my interest, and reading all the stuff, and then I said, my God, it's with oxygen ozone, has doing all these amazing things, which I'll talk about in a second. Why the hell are we using this in dentistry? It's ridiculous. It's safe, effective, does amazing things. So that's when I started developing all the protocols we have today. 20,000 plus dentists later, millions of treatments uh, being treated around the world, India, third world countries. I mean, uh, it's been quite, a, quite an adventure, to say the least. So here we are 20 years later. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about the fundamental scientific facts about oxygen ozone therapy, and then Bob will follow it up and apply those principles to our perio for today. So scientific facts about oxygen ozone itself. So the first is it has great disinfection properties, non-toxic wound healing, and of course as a result of disinfection properties and has non-toxicity, okay, no chemical side effect, of course you get improved and accelerated wound healing itself. Re the reason it has a great disinfection properties is that all those pathogenic forms I described earlier have little to no antioxidant systems built in their cell membranes. This is an oxidative therapy. There are no resistant forms to oxygen ozone therapy itself. So clean wounds, non-toxicity, allows for accelerated wound healing. But now we know, doing all the science, is that it actually activates, when it does certain protocols, there's a multiplicity of different protocols with oxygen ozone, the medical and dental end, that activation of the red blood cell metabolism with improved oxygen release. It works so well in these what's called major autoimmune therapies, blood therapies, that the Olympic committees have banned major autoimmune therapy, which is a, a blood treatment with ozone. What happens, it upregulates what's called 2,3-DPG, an enzyme system that allows for oxygen carbon dioxide exchange to easily occur. So it's really kind of an interesting doping thing that's done. But it also, as a result of this therapeutic oxidation, it allows the activation of the enzymatic antioxidant systems and free radical scavengers within the cells themselves. The cells start to anticipate or are regulated by the oxidation and upregulate the production of catalase, things like superoxide, dismutase, et cetera. So the whole antioxidant system in the body starts to upregulate itself. What was really kind of interesting, the last couple of years, friends of mine did a lot of research in Europe, and they found that ozone had a unique capacity for a immunologic modulation, okay? Modulation. Treatment with ozone, oxygen ozone therapy, modulate the immune system, what does that mean? If it's inflamed, if you're in an inflammatory state, it brings down the inflammation. If the immune system is underactive, it upregulates and re-regulates and brings the whole immune system back into regulation and proper function, homeostasis itself. But also they found an incredible amount of what's called you know, cytokines, which are interferons, uh, and uh, once again, interferons, interleukins, et cetera, regulating through the whole system itself. So it has an immune effect itself, which is perfect. Once again, we have that increased antioxidant capacity. Cells start to upregulate through that activation of those antioxidant systems within the cells themselves and the cell membranes itself. There are quiescent protein systems built in cells. Okay, these are nuclear factors that are quiescent. Once you have an oxidative stress, they're turned on. Like I said, these things are turned on, and the cells start producing tons and thousands and thousands and thousands of antioxidants. That's why I said we nurture the cells, get those quiescent protein systems turned on, it produces tons of antioxidants that can quench that oxidative stress, especially in chronically ill patients themselves. So it does have that anti-inflammatory effect, but also we get increased circulation because we get a collateral upregulation of nitric oxide. Why is that important? 
endothelial, remember the old endothelial relaxation factor? You know, you see uh, everybody on eating beets like crazy today. What they want to produce is what? Nitric oxide. Studies have shown that it super upregulates nitric oxide formation, and you get this beautiful vascular flow. So we're taking these principles and applying them to our dental care. And it has a high redox potential. I love that. What does that mean? That means it has the capability of donating electrons. It will recharge the batteries of cells. So we have high redox potential, ability to donate electrons and vitalize tissue itself. So all these principles brought together that we understand much better now through science and publications, et cetera, these are all support that what? Innate healing processes. Because ultimately, our therapeutic goals are really we want to support healing, sound nutrition, okay? You have to give the patient good sound nutrition, good hydration, get that pathogenic load reduced down, especially in dental, you know, or disease itself, okay? Reduced or back into colonization. Once you do those things, the body will do the work. It will auto-regulate, auto-detoxify, and that famous drainage thing, okay? So integration of ozone therapy, which we're gonna, Bob Harris next is gonna get into a little bit more, is to, you know, integrates into uh, daily dental practice itself. It's amazing with dental ozone, a number of you have incorporated it in, and I know Matt has, a number of you have, and it becomes just a major part of everything you do in dentistry. It's just absolutely amazed me that something as simple as oxygen and ozonated water has just a dramatic effect on your dental practice. And uh, we we're lucky to discover that. That was pretty, pretty amazing. So with that in mind, uh, this is just the beginning for you. And ozone has taken me around the world. I mean, I would never believe I'd be standing in the Great Pyramids lecturing to Egyptians about ozone. I'd be standing at Taj Mahal in Mumbai lecturing uh, to uh, dental students and uh, dentists out there that were bringing this therapy out into these far reaches. Last, you know, November, I was, well, a while back, I say I was in China uh, a while ago, and uh, we're bringing ozone. Ozone's a major, major contributor to healthcare in China now. This is how they're dealing with some of these issues uh, with the corona out there. And uh, so it's just amazing that uh, where we, we are today it surprises the heck out of me. So, you know, rest well, and, uh, but not rest too much now. You'll get a break. In the future, right, that's Tankenstein and Darla. And uh, I just want to thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you.